Uh, today I would like to talk about accessibility automated testing in general on some theoretical level with some practical bits. I mean, I don't have a working solution right in my pocket, but I hope uh, we can figure out today what is the right way to get one. I think it's fair to say that everyone who develops uh, applications or web services has to take care about accessibility at some point. Because accessibility is not something that works for granted. Uh, I mean, you can use the accessible blocks, but it doesn't mean the all combination of accessible plug will stay accessible. So, and as long as you start care about accessibility, you probably start care about automated test testing uh, to test accessibility all accessibility features that specific to your application, uh, and. There is a uh, many product that has uh, integrated accessibility automated testing, and um, some of them are better, some of them are not so good. Uh, but uh, looking at this diversity of the approaches, and actually also realizing that we still have manual accessibility testing for AM specifications which uh, stands for ARIA and HTML e Accessibility APIs mappings. So I think it'd be nice to try to systemize the existing approaches and try to come with a better and more universal solution that would cover the majority of cases. Uh, this is the main idea of today's discussion. So I have a 17 slides, introductory slides, which are probably should I meet today because I, I think the audience is uh, quite familiar with the topic. But uh, I just give you a short summary for just uh, for, for those slides. So uh, basically, I try to answer the two questions what we want to test and how we want to test. So, what we want to test is for sure the web browser. The web browser means um, uh, we have to test the all accessible blocks, like such make sure the HTML elements are accessible and ARIA attributes are properly properly exposed to the assistive technologies. And um, and on the other side, this is uh, web application accessibility. This is sort of the ultimate goal, the web accessibility, I guess, because that's what the user users uh, see in the end. And also, it'd be nice if the the solution would cover the uh, desktop and mobile application as well. So this is what to test and how to test. There is a, I would say the, the first level of the testing is unit testing is probably what your system has to have, but it's probably you cannot to, uh, you cannot systemize it or you cannot make the, it's real common. So it's specific to the applications. And the, but the, what, what, what we could look at is a for sure accessibility APIs testing, which is a very low level testing. And it's quite useful for the browser, I would say, because it allows it to test HTML, ARIA, all stuff like this. And um, and it probably will be hugely hugely useful for a different kind of toolkits which are extend HTML5 capabilities. Uh, I think it has sort of restricted uh, restricted uh, usage for a web application, but I think the web application could also benefit from the testing accessibility APIs. And other type of testing is. Uh, assistive technologies testing. So basically the idea you run your application or web server through a screen reader and you make sure the screen reader say the right thing. It's kind of end-to-end -end testing, which is, uh, well, it sometimes is good. It's good as any end-to-end -end testing. So this is the uh, how to test. And uh, let's switch to to the next topic, what we have now. Uh, I don't have, I, I didn't really look at like all possible approaches. Uh, I, I'm from the browser world and um, I'm working for web accessibility. So you probably also are. 
uh, but so uh, I focused on what the web browser has currently. Uh, I think it's fair to say that fair to say the the web browsers are has made some real good progress on accessibility testing. So here's a short overview of what happens in the browser's world. AOM. It's not browsers, for sure, but it's something that closely related. AOM stands for Accessible Object Model, uh, and I think it's fair to say this is an attempt to expose accessibility properties in a cross-platform way across all browsers. Uh, AOM defines the typical things that any platform accessibility API has. It's like roles, it's properties, relations, methods, accessible tree after all. So uh, you can think of AOM as a, as a web accessibility API, which quite similar to um, platform APIs. So having AOM with all these typical accessibility features uh, could make potentially a great platform for cross-browser accessibility testing. Uh, the, sadly, it's not something that was implemented. So AAM was forked to array reflection, uh, which is prototyped by a few browsers by now. But array reflection specification is just a DOM reflection of array attributes, and thus it has uh, somewhat lower testing capabilities. For example, HTML elements that don't have proper uh, array mapping cannot be tested by array reflections, or inaccessible events cannot be tested as well. So, OAM is something that has testing potential, but is not yet implemented or even specified. Let's take a look at what Gecko, uh, at Gecko. So, Gecko testing is uh, JavaScript based. Uh, Gecko has a fairly fairly mature set of cross-platform accessibility interfaces. Uh, it's worth noting that Gecko's accessibility core is a uh, huge system that incorporates almost every feature that desktop or pl platform accessibility API has, uh, which make the platform layers quite thin. So if you test something on a cross-platform layer in Gecko, then you have really good chances and you can have a good level of confidence it work well across platforms because those are tiny wrappers around the accessibility core. Uh, nevertheless, Gecko exposed native NS accessibility object to JavaScript the same way as they do for cross-platform testing. It works nicely and allows to poke at all Mac attributes and parameterized attributes as well as, as it allows to listen to events. This approach probably is not profitable as is because it relies on somewhat ancient technology that comes from Netscape times, but I think it could be adapted to work through web idea or something similar, but certainly it is a good one to get inspired by. So here is a, an example of Gecko accessibility test. This particular test is about NS accessibility protocol, which I think is more interesting for today's talk because it allows testing native platform APIs. So uh, they have a get native interface function that returns you a JavaScript wrapper around native Mac object for a given domain. So uh, the web wrapper provides um, access to the native NS accessibility properties such as attributes or parameterized attributes. The test suite also allows you to listen to Mac events. Uh, strictly speaking, it's not real Mac events because it's just a hook that triggers, uh, it's just JavaScript hook that triggers when a native Mac event is about to fire in Firefox. But perhaps it's, it's not a big deal. In this example, it retrieves Ax element busy attribute, then it changes it and waits for Ax uh, element busy change event, and then it checks this uh, Ax uh, uh, element busy attribute was adjusted uh, properly. So uh, I think it's quite a typical scenario, uh, quite a typical scenario for almost any test. Uh, you get a property, you make an action, you wait for a event, and then make sure the property was adjusted properly. Uh, you can imagine the cross-platform tests are quite similar to this one. 
Uh, Gecko implements its own test suite, which provides you a number of util functions such as OK or Is, which are responsible to handle or report successful failures. In this example, the OK function is used. Uh, this is a kind of testing systems they, where uh, a test body explicitly lists test expectations. Or, in other words, the test says uh, which thing to test and what is expected value. As a consequence, uh, if you need to change expectation, you have to adjust the test manually. It's quite a typical system, uh, system though. Let's look at Let's take a look at WebKit. So, uh, I think it's fair that WebKit uh, prim primary platform is Mac. Uh, so it has a somewhat decent support on the NS accessibility protocol and has a quite good testing for it. But it also supports NTK and MSA. Uh, the WebKit test you is rather straightforward and implements testing capabilities in a cross-platform style. It exposes a helper object to DOM and you can query platform-dependent accessible properties and methods from that object right from JavaScript. Uh, here is a WebKit uh, example how the uh, well it's, it's probably like a typical example of this example. So um, here uh, you get a accessible object from DOM by calling DOM window accessible controller property. You get like a JavaScript wrapper around a native accessibility object. It's quite similar to what Firefox does. Or probably it'd be more correct to say what Firefox does is quite similar to what WebKit does because uh, WebKit uh, developed its uh, solution before Firefox, but perhaps it's not a big deal. Uh, the test suite is uh, quite different from Firefox. Well, this is not surprising, but it's something worth to mention. Uh, the main difference is a WebKit test generates output, which is compared to expectations stored in separate files. If the test output matches the to expectations, then the test passes, otherwise it fails. It's quite often that the test expectations are also listed in test body by using should be function, like you, like the one you can see in this uh, in very this example. And this makes this approach quite similar to the gecko. So if you have to adjust expectation, then you have to adjust your test. However, the test you design allows you to not list that expectation test body. And actually, there is a bunch of examples through the WebKit code. Probably not widespread, but uh, there is uh, some very good examples. WebKit also support event testing. This particular event uh, test uh, looks like, uh, like a little bit bulky. I think it could be wrapped nicely by some promise-based functions. But the thing is, the uh, WebKit also has a test for uh, NS accessibility events. And let's took, take a look at Chromium. Like Firefox and WebKit, the Chromium also has platform tests, which are used to test platform accessibility APIs. So, uh, Besides that, the Chromium has uh, unit tests. This is not something uh, that Firefox has, for example. I'm not quite familiar with WebKit code, but I assume the WebKit has everything that Chromium has. So, uh, but I think the unit test like is sort of a key thing for any kind of testing uh, because it allows you test to test under the hood stuff, uh, which you which cannot be tested through any accessibility APIs. So this is important thesis, but it probably goes beyond uh, beyond uh, our today's topic. So the what's matter here is that Chromium also has its own way to test platform accessibility, and which is quite similar to WebKit one. So. Uh, I think there is one significant difference here. 
is a um, chromium prefers to not list test expectations in a test body unlike the WebKit. so but let's talk about this uh, a little bit later let me show you like a couple examples of chromium tests so here is a typical example how chromium tests the accessible tree over different platforms there is an html file which represents a test case and there is a comment section on top of the file which uh, lists all testing instructions um, in this particular case it's all about uh, property filtering which properties should be present on the uh, result accessible tree and uh, all the instructions are platform dependent. So you can see here the Mac and Windows and Linux properties, uh, filters. So, uh, and yeah, let, let's take a look at the uh, expectation file. So here's a Mac expectation file as an example. Here is a accessible tree in a DHO format. And as you see, it includes act selected and act selected children uh, and accessibility attributes. Uh, which are which were specified by the test instruction from the previous slide. So the test instructions are not about property filtering only. The, there are other instructions defined in the test flow. For example, you can delay a test until page loads or until something invisible on the page, which is quite used for dynamic tests. Uh, Trimmy also supports advanced tests. It is an ordinary HTML file with a script inside. The script is invoked when the test starts, and then the test records all fired events and their targets, dumps all of this uh, into like a string, and then it checks it against the expectation file. Uh, here is a expectation file how they look may look like this is mac expectation file and windows expectation file basically this is a list of all events with their targets so uh the chrome also supports some scripting uh in this particular case you call ax start selected text mark marker and as accessibility attribute on the paragraph and Below, you can see the expectation file. Basically, you shouldn't care about this format. It just say there is a, we call the ax uh, start text marker on a paragraph, and here is its value. So, uh, Chrome also supports some basic test flow control. You're able to invoke subse subsequently a number of JavaScript functions and record, and then record an accessible tree after each function. Uh, then compare it to expectation file. It may look a little bit hacky, but it can be a good demonstration how test flow can be defined. In this case, the uh, open model function is called, which is responsible to show the model dialog on the screen. The function returns dialog string, which makes a part uh, of a um, dialog name, I believe, dialog title. So. Uh, and if the when the uh, dialog gets visible, then the test see the dialog word on the screen, and then it it serves like indication the test should be continued. And then remove span uh, function is called, and so on. So that how the test flow works. To summarize, let's summarize. Uh, the test suite idea is you have an HTML file which represents a test case. You have instructions to define a test flow. Uh, you run a test which generates output, for example, an accessible tree. Each platform has its own expectation file. Uh, the test suite generates, um, compares generated output with an expectation file. If those match, then the test pass is not then fails. So, Chromium supports multiple platforms API. Uh, this is MSA accessible and UAA on Windows, NS accessibility protocol on Mac, ATSPA on Linux. So, all major platforms are covered. 
But the main thing here is Chromium can deal with real platform objects, not their internal prototypes. So basically what Chromium tests is the same thing that the assist technologies operate with. The major consequence of this is Chromium test suite, when it comes to testing, has nothing in common with Chromium browser itself. Or in other words, the Chromium browser is a target for the test suite and technically you can substitute it with any other application. The other main gotcha of Tromium test suite is the test can be rebaselined easily, unlike any other types of tests. If something is changed on API level, for example, if an accessible tree was adjusted, new properties were implemented, or ARIA name computation guide was changed, like basically any change, then you need all you need is to run a test and capture its output, which becomes the new expectation. So it's like making a snapshot which becomes a new standard and all new su subsequent runs will have to match the new standard. Enough for Chromium details. Uh, let's summarize. Chromium test suite could potentially make the great base for the universal test suite that works all across all browsers and it may work even for desktop or mobile applications. Let's pull things together. Here is a short summary of what Chromium test suite is. Uh, multiple platforms are supported. AD SPI on Linux, MSA accessible to an UA on Windows and accessibility protocol on Mac. Also there is some Android support for those who's interested. Multiple things can be tested. Uh, accessible tree, accessible properties, accessible events, like basically there is a full, full, uh, uh, everything uh, you have in accessibility APIs. Uh, multiple plat applications can be tested, including desktop or mobile applications. And there is a test flow control. It's sort of basic, but you still, uh, you, you can control the test flow. Uh, and easy rebaselining. If you ever have to change the test expectation, then all you do is just rerun the test and record its output. This kind of test to you allows to adjust expectations with about zero effort. Chromium test suite is good, but it's not perfect. Actually, it's far from being perfect. But it has great potential, I believe. Let's run quickly over what we can and probably what we should do to improve. Scripting capabilities are quite restricted. Basically, you can call a property or a method, so you can invoke a JavaScript function or wait for an event, and that's pretty much it. There is no condition or loop support, there is no any control statement that you've got to use in literally every scripting language, and it may get a real bummer as the test complexity increases. So currently there is no much control over what goes to output or how you control the test. But if JavaScript was used to generate the output, it probably uh, could be much nicer. For example, if you wanted to test an accessible table interface to make sure that each table cell has an associated header element, then you would benefit from having a loop statement, for example. Uh, I'm not quite confident how it could look from technical perspective, but if TestSuite integrated a Chromium JavaScript engine or perhaps the 8 engine, the, the one that Node.js is using, uh, I guess it could make overall testing flow scripting experience much nicer. Uh, the current approach to drive a test is to keep a bunch of JavaScript functions which are called one after each other. It is a workable approach, I suppose. Content.js is not almighty though, so you can run into privilege restrictions. Uh, perhaps it could be work around it or not, but there are other options to consider. So the first one, if we had JavaScript based dri driven, driven testing instructions, for example, a Node.js script, then we also could have a Selenium web driver dependency which would provide the full control over the browser web content. 
Uh, also, we could stick with Puppeteer, the DevTools Chromium API. It's implemented now by Chromium only, for example, Firefox also implements it. So uh, it could be also um, other options which allows you to control the web router. And lastly, we could think of independent and system-wide user action emulation. It's the most universal way to control the browser and actually any other application. It requires separate implementation for each platform, though, which is at least is a long term is a long term thing. Chromium dependency is also a thing to think of. Uh, Chromium test suite is tightly connected to Chromium code. It's fine at least for now, but Chromium source code is huge, which put certain restrictions. For example, if you want to test Firefox, then you probably don't want to download the whole Chromium or build whole Chromium. Uh, also, hosting owning is a thing to think of. I guess it's pretty fine to keep the whole thing in Chromium until it matures, but perhaps something is something to keep in mind. One day it might make sense to start a separate project. And that's pretty much it on my side. I just finished with Chromium advertisements. So, how does it all sound? <laughs>